David Wilson fumbled the ball twice. And inside handoff as the Giants try to get something going on the ground. And Wilson gets taken down by Hayden, and the ball is loose, and that's Barry Church going to the end zone. Oh, big deal. They could have tossed a cheerleader over the goal line. Make sure you tune in live every Monday, 3 to 4 p.m. on WICR. Listen at Ustream.com or Live 365. Just search WICR. Welcome to the morning show here, Gales. You're listening to me, P. Considori, and producer Pat McGuire. How you doing, Pat? Not too bad. Waking up. Yeah. Right and early, right? Yeah, Ken's not. Nah. No. No, he's up. He's uh, he's uh, had uh, previous, uh, previous commitments um, as he has in the past. Uh, let's let's jump on right into news. Yeah. Uh, President Obama expressed to Russia President Val- Vladimir Putin uh, his deep concern over Russia's clear violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. So Ru- Russia's getting involved in this Ukraine business. Yeah. Um, this definitely tensions are high. I mean, tensions have always been high with Russia. I mean, you can't really calm it down, and people are calling out an- another Cold War. They're saying if if things peak. It's going to, essentially, we're going to go into another Cold War. The problem is with the Cold War, nowadays, it's it's very likely something will happen. Yeah. Not just a threat like the Cold War was where everyone was like, I, I want to say the Cold War was a bluff. Yeah, I, I mean, it was just always kind of like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm going to do but it. But they never did it. But I feel like it's getting to the point where someone's just going to do it. They're yeah. like, all right, I'm done. And just hit the button, <laughs> and then a country's gone, you know? Pretty much, but I mean... I hope it doesn't get to that, because no, that's of ridiculous, not. and... We should all live in harmony, and you know, in yes, peace. you're not gonna you're not gonna agree with other countries. It's never gonna happen. I mean, there are some countries you do agree with, some you don't. But just don't obliterate each other. Yeah, I mean, what I found was interesting is that Putin later said that uh, Russia has a right to defend its interests. I mean, what, what kind of interests exactly? I, th- I feel like that they still, even though that they are essentially a world power just in size, that they feel that. Even though we they left and ba- bankrupt all these Soviet bloc countries, right. that they that they still have essentially obligation over them, that they just left them for there, and then that, and then oh, rebuild your country, and then oh no, we're back, you know, it's just it just doesn't really well it's, this click whole to me. this whole thing is a breach of international law, um, including Russia's obligations of the under the UN Charter and of its 1997 military basing uh, agreement with Ukraine. So I mean they're they're not doing the right thing, exactly, and I think they know it. Well, I mean, I don't think Putin really knows it. He's just kind of no, no. In I, this think he, veil of I think ignorance. I think he knows it, but he puts on a veil of ignorance. I mean, you, you have to be—you have to know what's going on with your country. You're the—you're the, you're oh, yeah. the what was that? A president, dictator? What was it Big, called? Uh, same thing for him. Yeah, you know, he's <laughs> been running, running for that long. Whatever, whatever. Czar. I, I don't <laughs> know if they still use that term. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's. I think he knows it. I think he knows it, and he's just trying to stick his nose into things. Yeah. And I feel like maybe he's calling the UN's bluff and saying, "Oh well." You're not going to do anything about this law. It's stupid. I'm right here. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to do anything. And the country's essentially bankrupt to begin with. You oh, know? yeah. You can't really have no war when you don't have any cash to really supply it. There isn't war. It's just an invasion. I mean, if most, have, of, most of the time, that's an act of war. It's you an know, act. You, you it may be a, a country. It may be an act of war, but if you can't defend yourself, it's an invasion. It's not even a war. What are you, well, you going to do? Ukraine is still, uh, Ukraine is still... I think I think from what I've heard, they wanted to start building up up what a, what would be an army, but I mean the whole population of Ukraine is the size of one military. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, yeah. Hopefully, nothing crazy. Yeah. Goes on. President Obama immediately stated that Russia will face costs for intervening. I love it. Costs. We're just all we're all looking for money in <laughs> Ukraine. Later, uh, Republican uh, from Arizona, John McCain, uh, said the president must articulate what the costs are and immediately impose them. So yeah, we're sending them a bill. Um, we're saying if you don't pay it. Oh no 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 no! Like costs, yeah. like you know, <laughs> acts of war. I don't know. I mean, I just—it's always funny because once you hear like President Obama say something, of course you're gonna see some Republican just deny or not deny, but just kind of enforce it in more of a sense that well, like. I, f- I mean, McCain too. That's almost like a personal thing. Yeah. It's like it's personal. Like, all right, you beat me now. Show me that you can be the president. Kind yeah. of a thing. Um, I don't know. It just kind of feels like we're gonna either see two sides of the extremity in extremity in in this side in this country, but. That's always the case, though. You're never going to have a balance. Nah, never. Even really. even even in the House and in the Senate, there's supposed to be a balance. It's not. There's always the, there's always a majority leader, and, and everything like that. So there's never a balance. There's oh, it's always leaning I mean, to one side. It's set up that way. It's, it's set. I mean, it's set you look up. Look at it. It's set up. That yeah, way. it's set up that way. And 
I don't know. I just there should be some sort of balance. There should be some sort of compromise because everyone's just either left or right or they don't want to be a part of it. Yeah. So on to something a little bit happier. A little, little happier. Uh, Mila Kunis. Uh, everyone knows from that '70s show, as well as Ashton Kutcher. Um, they're actually engaged. Yeah. This is looks this like is it. news. Looks like. I mean, you know, he went from <laughs> Demi Moore to Mila Kunis. Yo, what I thought was actually extremely interesting is that Mila Kunis went out with Macaulay Culkin. Yeah, what was I, that I, about? I don't. I and for eight years. He, that must have been a, that years. must have been depressing. It looked depressing. That, that a lot kid, of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that, that kid was the most depressing. Like just looking at him, he looked oh. so depressed. He looked like he was not happy at all with anything. Oh no! Especially the way he grew up, he looks like a like a like a rat. Like you know, I mean, sorry to be that kind of guy, but he just doesn't look healthy <laughs> either. I mean, you know, they just don't kind of like Mila oh, and man. those. Maybe don't maybe really she care. was looking for someone to take care of. <laughs> yeah. Mentally and physically, because he he did not look like he had his act together, and I, I can't I just can't believe that. Yeah. Oh, man. And he never uses aftershave. I don't think he even uses he doesn't grows a beard. It's a little. He's doing know. the killing like I am. Yeah. Exactly. See. <laughs> Here we go, the Pat game. McGuire here on the morning show. So, um, yeah, the former co-stars of the hit show, that 70s shows, which was which was a good show. I oh, mean, I love that. Show. A lot of people don't give it too much credit. If you watch a good couple of episodes, it's funny. Yeah, and every time I turn on the TV, and and half these watch people that haven't show. done half these people haven't done anything after except for probably Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, yeah. and the, maybe the father and mother have appeared in some stuff. Yeah, but, but I, mean, I haven't really seen most of them. Uh, <clears> you'll see them once in a while. Yeah. But yeah, that's. <laughs> it was a great show. Every time was, I turned it on, it was something new. Yeah. It had so many seasons that it, it was, was just... It was great. Um, they're soon to be married. Uh, supposedly, a uh, little gossip. I feel like a girl right now. Uh, supposedly, <laughs> Ashton was uh, uh, Mila's first kiss. Um, woo. Aww. Woo. Uh, the relationship began back in 2010 after Mila Kunis went out with Macaulay Culkin, as we said. And Ashton married uh, and divorced Demi Moore. I don't even know what that was about. Yeah. Ashton Kutcher with Demi Moore. You know what I also found interesting when I when I looked this up is that Demi Moore, who was before that married to Bruce Willis, yes, Bruce Willis went to their wedding. Would oh, you that's do that? that's not awkward at all. Really? No. Oh, okay. All right. That, my fault. <laughs> sarcasm here on WICR. Um, nine a.m. Sarcasm. Nine a.m. on a Monday. Sarcasm. That's <laughs> rare to come by. Um, but yeah, that that doesn't. I just don't get that. Suit. As a person in the wedding, <laughs> I wouldn't want a, him to be there. And if I was him, I wouldn't want to be there. I mean, I guess it was for I, publicity. Like, okay, I'm a nice ex-husband. It's okay. I'm there. I gave them a gift. Yeah, I'm on yeah. my way. You know? Now, even then, the gift. Like, what do you get your ex-wife at her wedding? Here's a nice... <laughs> A bill. This is <laughs> you owe me money now. Here, I'll pay for your dress. Like <laughs> that's that's all right. That's weird. Yeah, Pat. that's weird. I mean, like you gotta work it in somehow. <laughs> I'm sure the gift was an insult. I'm sure it was something like, "Oh, here's a dollar." You know, like <laughs> something like he was just like, "Yeah, I came." It was not out of happiness. It was just to spite you. Spousal. What is that? Spousal reimbursement. Sure, sure. <laughs> it's an alimony. Time of some wasted. Sort. <laughs> Time, time wasted, <laughs> pain and suffering. <laughs> He's gonna sue uh, Demi Moore for pain and suffering throughout the marriage. Um, sports. I know we're we're switching gears real quick, but going sports through it, going through it. Basketball. I I don't want to say it because it just kills me to say it. I'm just gonna start it off like what what. what? Let's just start it off. What exactly is a Jasper? I, I was mean, just about to say that. What, what is it? It just doesn't. I don't know. It looks like something that stings me. Well, it stung. It stung uh, this time around. Iona losing to Manhattan, eighty to seventy-seven. Close game. Yeah. Um, everyone in game. Manhattan. I saw statuses upon statuses upon statuses, and I just wanted to type back like, "Okay, you won one. Congrats." <laughs> like, all right. Yeah. I mean, it is what New York Times said. It is one of the, the biggest best, rivalries. Oh, yeah. It, it, Huge. In the tri-state county. I mean, you know, it's just Huge. Um. And let's let's talk about other teams. Um, uh, you know, Iona, Iona, Iona College um, does not stink, but this next team does. The Knicks, um, <laughs> Bulls one hundred and nine, Knicks ninety. I mean, we should just get off the NBA. We should be like a, yeah. a like a a minor league team at this point. <laughs> this is not even funny anymore. I'm a Knicks fan, and I'm saying this. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't do just, it. Just the defense. I is used so to watch. Bad. I used to watch every single basketball game and hockey game. Now I only watch every hockey game. 
Because I'm like, I know they're going to lose. And the one time they win, Carmelo gets 87 points in a game. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, he yeah. just goes... Makes Madison Square Garden history. At least. Yeah. And that's the only reason why. Once Melo walks, which he will, and I don't blame him, we're just going to be even more worse. Ugh. Raymond Felton playing with gun yeah, charges. I, I mean, that's another thing you got to take into consideration. Yeah, it's definitely not a distraction, Ray. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I don't... I don't get it either, you know? It just made me dislike basketball. I mean, I, I feel like that, that they're always down in that, like, kind of golden range where you think they're going to come back, no. but it's just like, ah, uh, ah, uh, nope, nope, nah, nope. Never. Close, but no cigar, you know? They will never win. I just... I want to see them win a championship just so I can laugh. <laughs> just so I can say, where did that come from? Because they don't have... They may have good players. Yeah, they have the talent. I think Prigioni is fantastic. Oh, yeah. He Felton. played well. Don't even say Felton. Don't even name, uh, really? speak of him. No, I don't like him. You don't like him? I don't like I'm, him as I've a player. I've always been a mellow I'm not fan. Talking, I'm not with. talking about the gun charges. He, what he does in his personal business is his thing. But he was not a good basketball player. I mean, he's he's been subpar. He is not just, I don't know, he hasn't done it for me when it comes to that team. Stoudemire. Stoudemire? Get rid of him. Really? He plays no defense. Have you seen him <laughs> in, in the five spot? Have you I seen mean, yeah. him? No, I mean, some As guy goes up for... the entire defense doesn't at, play defense. No, no, but Stoudemire literally just watches the guy run past him. Oh, yeah, okay. You, right. You've That's seen true. that, That's and true. you cannot deny that. I saw that. I definitely saw that. He and does it every single game to every single person that drives the board. He's like a little baby, like, don't touch me. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> At least use your wingspan to kind of, like, you know, give him a little intimidation. But he, he does let him walk by. And it's easy crosses, too. Easy yeah. crosses that just gets by him. Stoudemire, he's like, what, seven foot one? The guy is huge, and he can't block like a, a His name a makes him six sound foot huge. One. Yeah. Stoudemire. Oh, jeez. <laughs> like, hello. I, I just, I... No more. <laughs> just rebuild. Re just cut the whole team and just restart. Just get all <laughs> draft picks and just let's restart from scratch. I think that's I'd at least way. keep Melo. The guy can sink a three. He okay. The guy Mello? can sink a three okay. on a good night. On a very good night, okay. the man can sink a three. A very good night. I a like the way you said night. that. On a sink, very good night, three. he could sink a three because he has two good nights out of like six. <laughs> the guy is so inconsistent. If you're going to have a good player on a team that stinks, get a guy who's consistent because this is – it's not going to work. <laughs> Just like this. It's not working. And he's going, yeah, I need to move to a different team. You know what? More power to him. He wants to leave. Leave. He should walk. Has he said that? He no. wants to go to a better no, no. team? Or? No, no. I, I'm just saying this as like <laughs> as a me. Question. As me. He nice wants to go to – friendly. A, oh, he wants to go to a better team. I think he wants to go to a better team. Who doesn't? Yeah. Who doesn't want to say, okay, I want to go to the Heat? Okay, I want to go to this. I mean, the Bulls. The Bulls, yeah. Um, obviously, you want to go to a better team. He wants to win. I know he does. Like, it's everyone's mentality. Yeah. So, he will walk. I feel like he will. But if he's not consistent, he's going to be the same exact thing he is on the Knicks. Yeah. If, as he is on the Heat, on the Bulls. Denver. Denver. I mean, it's... He had his prime, and I feel like he's starting to lose it. Um, I mean... He, I think so. He I was consistent. I, I hate to do a... Uh, what is it called? Oh, it's slipping my mind. What is it? I Austin know. Powers. Here we go. I think he might be losing his mojo ever <laughs> so surely. I mean, he just needs to find it, you know? But, yeah, it, it's definitely his mojo. He, he lost something, and I, I don't – he's got to find it. Um, hockey. Another, I just, it's a horrible night for sports. The Islanders losing to the Panthers 5-3. to three. The, the What rain, happened there? I, well, come on. I just don't get it. It's the Islanders. You know, oh, Monday Monday morning sarcasm. I like it. All right. Here on the morning show. Um, the Bruins beating the Rangers 6-3. to three. I, I saw that coming a mile away. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. Lightning uh, 6, Avalanche 3. They're losing. Lost. I don't know. Um, the Senators lost against the Canucks. Uh, excuse me, won against the Canucks 4-2. to two. Canucks obviously coached by the ex-Ranger coach, John Tortorella. Uh -oh. Jay Torts. <laughs> no one liked him. No? He was a great coach, but no one liked him as like a... That's what I heard. I mean, he was just kind of a... Oh, he was fantastic. He well, was a great coach. I mean, we didn't win. Uh, we got to the playoffs a bunch of times, and I, I'll give yeah. him credit for that. But we never won the you know the whole thing. But the, the guy could coach, but he had some anger issues. 
I guess that kind of hey. contributes. You know, you got to have an angry guy to really get it going. But <laughs> I mean, like my my this coach, guy. this guy, <laughs> this guy was just overly angry. You could be angry, but this guy was like. Like he almost walked into an opposing team's locker room, yelling at the the coaches and the players, <coughs> and like the security had to get like he's he's you're, you're right there. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's bad. Like he needs oh, to like man. see someone. <laughs> and uh, the Blues being the Coyotes for it too. Blues looking good this year. They are. They, they, they always look good, up. but I feel like they're the, they're that choke artist team. You know, like they get to the playoffs, they look fantastic. Like a mellow. Like, then they lose first round. Yeah, exactly. Once you get it, you get it. Once you don't <coughs> have it, you yeah. Something's something's missing. Yeah, well, I mean, I I don't know what to say about the NHL. We're back from Olympic break. Everyone's so hyped up about the Olympics. No one wants to actually play NHL hockey now. Yeah. Um, Talbot did well for us. Talbot came back from the Olympic break. He wasn't in the Olympics. Uh, our uh, backup goalie gave us a two-one, uh, I think, win. Yeah. Against the Blackhawks. Then Lundqvist comes in and loses two games in a row. Like, all right, Flyers, then then Bruins were dropped down to third now. The Flyers are in second. And the Capitals are very close to uh, pumping up to third. We're only a point away. Yeah. It's very close to the Metropolitan Division. Um, I mean, they're definitely getting but, close. But um, also, tensions are high. I don't know if you found this, and I, I really don't know. I haven't looked it up, but I really should. Callahan is 99% that he's going to be traded by the deadline, which I believe is Wednesday. Oh, man. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see who we get for him, if he does walk, and where he goes. Now, I know the Sabres were offering him the money and time that he wanted. Yeah. So I, I feel like the Sabres, um, maybe the Lightning, maybe the Blues. I mean, like, how much of a value is he really to the team, essentially, you know? Because you, um, you got to see love, how much of it changes up the gameplay. I love Callahan, but I feel like right now he's just a name. Two other players. To the Rangers, he's a great leader. He's a great captain. But when people hear Callahan, they want him because he's Ryan Callahan. It's just it's just a household name. He's a great player, but he's not a good point scorer anymore. He was fantastic. But for some reason, this year and a year lost back... Lost his mojo. Lost his mojo. Him theme. and Carmelo should just hang out and see what's up. <laughs> but he just... Either that or they already are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they probably are. And that's... It, Melo's stuff is rubbing off on Callahan, and that's why. But... Callahan, I just don't think he's worth the money and time he was asking. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, mean, he's not too old, but when you ask for seven years with like $47, 48000000 million. I mean, the fact that you have to say that he's not too old. It's gonna be too. He's gonna be too old come seven years. That's after, what I'm you saying. You, it's almost like an A Rod deal. You're not gonna spend two hundred and fifty million ten years, and then you exactly. only get four years out of the guy. Exactly. That's the problem. That's what people. That's what teams are, are looking out for. They don't want to sign these long, long, extended no, plans that not. they know people are not going to contribute for another uh, seven years. Now, Girardi was just resigned to an extension. I think sixty six years, thirty three million dollars. Wow. That's a deal. Yeah. Because Girardi's a great defenseman, a defensive player. Yeah. You know he's going to produce when and it comes know, to defense. That's what he is. And something that reminds me about, like, I hate to bring it back to the NFL, and this is the last you'll ever hear about me saying this, but Peyton Manning. <laughs> when you when you hear about that, you, you hear him getting signed, and you see, uh, you know, with his past neck injury, they didn't yeah. know if he was going to be able to, like, be able to show up, but... You know, he did. Yeah. Brought us to the uh, you know, Super Bowl. You but. know, I, I, I do believe that teams should take some sort of quote-unquote risks. If it's Callahan, it's going to be midseason. You trade him, the team morale is going to go bonkers. Like, it's just it, the team morale is going to be done. You just I have to really know <coughs> if this is going to be valuable. I say, if you, if you want to trade him, I always say this, if you want to trade him, trade him at the end of the season. Let the season be over. Don't mess with the team right now. We're in a good spot. We were in second. We're in third. We're in a good spot in a tight division. Don't mess with the team. You know, yeah, bring up JT Miller because Zuccarello hurt his hand. Okay, bring up people to replace. But don't mess with your captain. Don't mess with your alternate captains. That's, yeah. it, it just messes up all of the team's morale and who they are. And it's like, wow, we just lost a captain. You know, yeah. now this guy's a captain. Who is he going to have an ego problem? Is he going to act differently because he's captain now? Blah, 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 this and that. I get I that. Think, I think Callahan's a great captain. I don't think he's worth $47 million for seven years, though. Right. He should have asked... He, should ask for less, but I feel like the Rangers are going to let him walk, and I don't blame them. It's it's sad to see him go, but I like I'd like to see who we get in return for him. Yeah, I heard St. Louis. 
And he ain't St. Louis, but he's 38. See, it's, there you it's, go. It's probably the a, age. The age. He's a great player, though. We won't get much, probably many more years out of him unless he turns out to be a Yager at 42. <laughs> just he, he actually scored his 700th career goal the other uh, the other night. Wow. Yeah. NHL, not history, but like he he's yeah, one I of the mean, few. That's, that's up there. Well, he's 42, 43 years old. I mean, the guy's been around. <laughs> He's got history um, with the teams, I guess. Yeah, back to basketball real quick. So I just, I don't know, I don't, my mind's in different directions this morning. But back <laughs> to basketball because we forgot to say, Wichita State finishing their season thirty-one and zero. Oh man, thirty-one and zero. That's undefeated. that's awesome. That's awesome. Undefeated. Anytime you have an undefeated season, you just gotta feel good about it. Oh yeah, you know, and. And like let's you said hope, before, let's hope that continues through the bracket because you know how yeah. it happens. You know, you get to the bracket all of a sudden, first round. See you later. You know. Yeah. I mean, pretty much. But you, like you said before, it's it's, it's kind of interesting. You just don't mess with the team. You got a winning team, and you know it's going to be interesting come come bracket season. Definitely. Um, let's let's uh, get out of sports. Let's talk about entertainment and just different news. Why don't you talk about this next story? Oh um, man. What what is this about? You know, it, it's a trending video that supposedly is really popular among the uh, Indian community. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know, I I can't tell you really much about it, but they supposedly decoded the Indian head shakes. I have not seen this. You have um, not seen. I mean, do you not notice this? I mean, I I didn't notice it until I started watching the videos. To be honest with you, because supposedly it's. Indian tradition to know the difference, like, our oh Lord, this is yes, this is no, you know. <laughs> just, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we we don't want people making fun of other people here. Yeah. Patrick, no, right. Come on. My fault. <laughs> um, let's let's move on. The real life Forrest Gump. Oh, wow, I I know about this. Uh, Steve uh, uh, Fugati. Steve Fugati. Yeah. Um, is a 67 year old man that is on his eighth walk across the U S. He started March 23rd, 2013, and he's planning on zigzagging across the lower 48 states as he has currently 21 out of the 27 states to go. Now, wait, I'm confused. He's going through 48 states. Yeah, I guess he's missing two of them. Yeah, well, he's missing Alaska and Hawaii, obviously. Yeah. But um, he's he's currently did 21 states. Yeah. I, I guess he wants to reach every single state, but that's kind of more power to him. Right? Yeah, I know, right? You got to pull a force Gump. You got to go. You got to. Yeah. Got to pull it pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, on to the 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 juicy news about the Oscars. <laughs> but let's let's we'll we'll go on to that after this uh, weather. Um, today is a high of twenty three, mostly cloudy and colder tonight. Low of ten. I can't do it. Uh, low of ten tonight with uh, mainly clear and frigid. Tomorrow, uh, heating up, high of 26. This weather report's brought Ooh. to you by I own a college. Move the world. So, the yeah. has been moved. Yeah, this... <laughs> <laughs> My friend Nick Rippo actually uh, <laughs> made a joke about that a long time ago, but <laughs> thank you for reiterating it. Yeah. So, on everyone's mind is the Oscars and the Best oh. Actor Award. Leo getting snubbed again. Just can't take it. Just can't get it. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I called it a week ago. Oh, he's gonna get. It. He's gonna get it. And now I look like just stupid. <laughs> Thanks, Yo, guys. I, I will give. Uh, who was? And you know what's guy? funny? Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. Stanko said Matthew McConaughey was gonna get it. Yeah. You know what? He, he is deserves good. It. He deserved. Oh, it. he did. He deserved. I it. didn't see the movie, but I feel like he did. Yeah. He definitely deserved. It. I mean, from what I saw, he's an incredible actor. And I, I don't want to say that he deserved it more than Leo, but he definitely deserved an Oscar. Well, listen, I there's a whole thing around Leo that it <laughs> I want to say he's overrated because he's not, but I feel like a lot of people are just saying he needs an Oscar because he's been in so many good roles. But I feel like maybe they weren't Oscar-worthy roles. Really? Yeah. I mean, The Wolf of Wall Street, yes. Yeah. You want to go far back Titanic? I feel like that was a okay. Bit, yeah. But I thought Wolf of Wall Street was a little bit too extreme to get an Oscar. Great Gatsby. Great Gatsby. I think he was it. phenomenal in that film. I saw that movie. I think he was great. Really? I think he was great as a Gatsby. See, uh, Gatsby, give me Gatsby a face. is one of my Gatsby is one of my favorite like books, old time movies. So I don't you think like, he did a good. So, I don't think he did a so good. So you're job. you're in favor of the 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 Rob Redford version. Oh yeah, I love that version. It's I thought, a great I version. That version captured the book more, and I hate to be that guy that I'm said not, the book was better. I'm not gonna I'm but. not gonna uh, disagree with you. I think that the Rob Redford version is amazing, but I think the Great Gatsby that was uh, aired what was it a year ago? Yeah. 
I think it appealed more to today. Yeah. They they adapted it to be today. Yes, it stuck to the book. It stuck stuck to the old time. You know, they did have the cars. They yeah. did. They I think they depicted um, uh oh man, Willie the gas station guy Willie. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, I think they depicted good. that town with the glasses. I think they depicted that perfectly. Oh, oh They yeah. did a great job with the the cars and everything. I was I was drooling over the cars, um, <laughs> but they used modern music. They used yeah. That's like, and it just made it. I think it made it nice. I think it made it different. It's like, okay, it's an old time book. It's an old time story, but you're using modern music that appeals to to not to me. I'm a hard rock guy, but yeah. something that appeals to the younger crowd or to exactly. Today. And I thought like the concepts that were in the movie were pretty on par with all yeah everything else. But I just thought Leo was just an awkward Gatsby. I think he was great. I, he, I don't know. He went from proper to. Just madman to proper again to madman and yeah I, okay all right. he he play I think he played it well the character no he was no Robert good, he was no Robert Redford I'm gonna say that right now no offense no. to Leo but you're talking about Robert Redford yeah. exactly but it just seemed a little weird to me you know every time he said old sport or any of those key Gatsby kind of cliches he just didn't really take it from I think me. I think it's because we maybe grew up with him if you will um, <laughs> Robert Redford we didn't you yeah. know you can see him as a proper not old but just different you know what i'm saying like i feel like there was more power with with robert redford because we really didn't see him in other roles yeah um i'm sure other people have seen roles by him but like still his his uh him as an actor is different than leo yeah um i think robert redford did more of the power and the more of i'm gatsby kind of acting yeah. and i feel like leo did the more psychological like he's proper but he's also insane. He can yeah. get really angry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I feel like that's the acting styles were different, and they yeah. are. And that's and that's a really cool thing to see <clears throat> is that he is able to like you know do two two extremes opposed to the other. Oh yeah. And it's just kind of really cool to see him do those type of it's nice movies. But it's it's refreshing. Yeah. Um. But Leo, you know, hopefully next year sometime you get some sort of Oscar. I mean, I know in my uh, film festival back in high school, I didn't win an award except for the. Um, John Sokata We Try Hard Award. Oh. <clears throat> so if for those of you who don't know, uh, John Sokata is a uh, kid in my school, and he won this award. He was the first to win this award because he had submitted films to the film festival multiple times but never won an award. So he got an award for his effort, for his knowing technically how to do things, making good films, but never won. Yeah. <clears throat> so I won this prestigious award um, a year after. So maybe we should have the We Try Hard Award for the Oscars. The We Try Hard Oscar goes to Leo. Thanks, thanks for showing up. Yeah, thanks for showing up. Here's your goodie bag that's worth fifty-five grand. <laughs> um, and a new Bugatti's outside for you when you walk out. So you know, something you can buy on your own. But we thought, hey, we're taking people's money. We'll we'll give it to you back. You know, might as well do it somehow. You give back to the community of actors. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, that's it for the morning show. I hope you enjoyed it. This morning sarcasm. Morning sarcasm at 9 a.m. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> it's, it's 9.52 oh, right now. Well, there but we go. You can listen to uh, Pat and I live every Monday morning at 9. Hopefully, Ken shows up. I mean, who knows at this point. <laughs> um, you can listen to us live on Ustream.com and Live365.com by searching WICR. You can like us on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash WICR Iona College Radio. Follow us on Twitter at Iona WICR. And you can go to YouTube and watch previously recorded shows, including this one. Um, you can go to YouTube.com forward slash WICR Gales Radio for all previously recorded shows. As always, you can see me Thursday nights at 6.30 on Full Metal Attack with Nick Grippo. Um, and hopefully Kenny will be here tomorrow. Hopefully so. I Who knows? I'm telling you. We, we, we can hope. Been, we can hope. The mystery. The mystery. The mystery behold. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9.